What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Today, I want to talk to you about Stephen King's Bag of Bones. This is a 2011 TV miniseries based on the novel by Stephen King. And uh, this has Pierce Brosnan in it, uh, Annabeth Gish, uh, Gish uh, who I knew from uh, the X-Files, the original X-Files series. Uh, also, Melissa George is in it, who uh, I saw in... Uh, uh, what's that movie called? 30 Days of Night. Uh, I feel like I've seen her in something else before, but off the top of my head, I can't remember what else I've seen her in. Uh, but uh, this is uh, basically the story of, uh, you're going to laugh when I say this, but a writer who lives in Maine. Uh, that's uh, kind of a hallmark of a lot of Stephen King stories. Uh, I should say, I knew absolutely nothing uh, going into this. Uh, this is not my copy. I watched this with my parents. It's my mom's copy. Uh, I knew nothing going into this. And as I said uh, a little while back, whenever I uh, talked talked about Rose Red. Uh, I watched that, and uh, even though I didn't just love that miniseries, it did kind of get me interested in other Stephen King things. And so, uh, while I haven't read any other Stephen King stuff since I did that video, uh, I did uh, kind of want to see what this was about, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know that Pierce Brosnan was in it. I didn't know the premise. Uh, I should say, if you see this DVD out in the wild, if you're interested in it and you don't know anything about it, don't even look at the back of the DVD cover. As I was about ready to film this video, I was looking at the back of the DVD, and there are some pretty big spoilers on the back here. Uh, one very big spoiler and another one that's not quite as big uh, but still pretty big. Uh, so if you're interested in this, don't even look at the back. Just buy it and try not to look at it at all and then just watch it and enjoy it. Or if you don't enjoy it, you know, just watch it. Uh, so I think that the plot of this is a little tighter than Rose Red. I think I enjoyed this more than Rose Red. Rose Red had a bunch of characters that you had to keep up with and I felt like it was a little slow at times in delivering uh, exposition and some of the characters that I was interested to see okay what's going on with this character he's popping pills what's he doing oh he died well never mind I guess we're not gonna find that out uh, there was a lot of that going on with Rose Red uh, with uh, this I think that the story is tighter uh, there are fewer characters that you have to keep up with uh, it's a little bit of a mystery story that the main character is kind of uncovering uh, as he moves into this house that he inherited from his grandfather uh, and his uh, wife who uh, spoilers by the way uh, his wife, who is now dead, uh, she had been renovating this house, so he goes there to try and get away uh, for a little bit shortly after his wife dies, and uh, then he starts uncovering this mystery uh, that's involved with this town. And uh, I think I like the plot of this better than I like Rose Red. Having said that, uh, there is some very problematic stuff with this, and uh, this is going to be a pretty heavy uh, video, I guess, so uh, if you don't want to uh, be really sad, then go ahead and turn this video off right now. But uh, it occurs to me that Stephen King might be unintentionally racist uh, because uh, if you are keeping up with your Stephen King bingo card, you have a writer who lives in Maine who fights some kind of uh, semi-cosmic evil. Uh, that's going on here. But then you also have the uh, mysterious black person who has some kind of supernatural powers. And uh, it was occurring to me that that happens quite a bit in Stephen King's work. And I'm not even uh, super uh, well-known about uh, all of Stephen King's stuff. Uh, I've only read uh, the Seven Dark Tower books, It, uh, Salem's Lot, and then uh, Eyes of the Dragon, and on writing. Uh, that's all that I've read from Stephen King, and then I've watched a few other things, but uh, let's count all of the black people who have uh, inexplicable cosmic uh, or magical abilities. You have Mother Abigail from The Stand. I'm almost willing to give that one a pass because a lot of characters in that have some kind of uh, unexplained magical ability. Uh, Mother Abigail is kind of psychically calling out to everyone to come to her in Nebraska, and everyone is getting these visions. And then if they're not going to Nebraska, they're going to Las Vegas, uh, and they're getting visions from uh, Randall Flagg. So I'm kind of willing to give that one a pass. She just happens to be uh, this uh, icon that represents all the good in the world. Uh, so it's not that she necessarily has magical abilities uh, because uh, you do have the literal hand of God uh, that shows up in the stand. Uh, again, I haven't read the book, but I have watched the uh, miniseries from the 90s. And so uh, it's not that she has these abilities. She's just acting through a higher power. So I'm kind of willing to give that one a pass. And then you have uh, The Shining, which I have not seen, uh, but uh, uh, what's his name? Mr. Halloran. I can't even remember his first name, uh, but he is a black man who has uh, some kind of psychic magical ability called The Shining, uh, and he tells the little boy in that about it. Uh, like I said, I'm just passingly familiar with The Shining. Uh, I don't even know if the little boy has magical abilities in that. Maybe he does, uh, in which case, I guess uh, it's a little bit more okay uh, when multiple people have these abilities. It's kind of like the X-Men. Uh, there's nothing racial about it. You've got characters like Storm who have 
abilities, and then you've got characters like Cyclops who have abilities. It's just people have abilities, and maybe that's what's going on in The Shining. Uh, now, Mr. Halloran also is mentioned in It, uh, and It is actually an example of this not happening. Uh, you've got several characters who are part of the Losers Club. Most of them are white, uh, but you do have Mike Hanlon, uh, who kind of uh, becomes the, uh, not really the leader, but he's the one who stays in town, and when everyone grows up, they move away, and they forget about their oath to come back if It ever returns to the town uh, to start terrorizing again. And so Mike is the one who gathers everyone to help uh, defeat It once again. And he doesn't have any magical abilities, so uh, I guess I'll give him points, uh, give Stephen King points for that. Uh, but then you have this movie, or miniseries, and this is where it really kind of jumped out at me like, oh, this is not great. Uh, so the plot here, again, talking about some really heavy stuff here. Uh, so uh, this old man, uh, who his name is, uh, I think, Max uh, DeVroe uh, is his name, and he is trying to get custody of his granddaughter because his son uh, married this woman played by Melissa George and then they had a kid and then the son was actually trying to murder his daughter and then uh, his wife shot him uh, to keep him from murdering uh, their daughter and so now uh, her father-in-law is trying to get custody of his granddaughter and he is just an evil evil human being as soon as we see him he is just really awful and then throughout most of the movie he is trying various ways to strong arm uh, this woman Melissa George and uh, Pierce Brosnan's character, uh, who has moved into this small town. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, uh, he saved the little girl from getting run over by a car, and so he kind of gets roped into this. Uh, they call him as a witness to try and use him against the woman to say that she's an unfit mother, uh, and he doesn't cooperate with that. Uh, but uh, you see all these people in this town who work for this guy, and they're basically willing to do whatever uh, to help him get whatever he wants, except for Pierce Brosnan's character. And over the course of the movie, you find out, it's actually in part two of the miniseries when you find this out, uh, but uh, during part one, Pierce Brosnan is uh, starting to experience these uh, uh, psychic flashes. Uh, at one point, there are these uh, magnet letters on the refrigerator, and they are making messages for him. And he's not sure who is communicating with him. Uh, he starts seeing uh, these visions of a uh, jazz singer uh, from the 1930s. Uh, I'm not sure what the what the genre of music is, uh, but uh, the 1930s music uh, in this small town. And it's a black woman. And uh, he starts seeing these visions of her, and he doesn't know who she is. Uh, and then uh, there are other people in the visions. He doesn't know who they are. Uh, but then he finds out that Max DeVroe uh, actually raped this woman uh, back in the late 1930s. And his four friends, uh, they all watched and were a party to it. And then uh, it turns out this woman's daughter actually saw it happen. And so then Max DeVroe says, okay, we have to kill her and we have to kill this other one uh, so that there aren't any witnesses. And so they drown the little girl and then I think they just beat the woman to death. And then uh, before they kill her, she curses them. She says, that all of you, uh, you or your descendants, are going to be killing your own daughters uh, as uh, recompense for what you did to my daughter. And then uh, it turns out Pierce Brosnan's grandfather was one of these guys. And so uh, Max DeVro is basically trying to kill his own granddaughter to end this curse because she is the last living descendant of one of those five guys. And uh, I guess it's a fine little mystery. Uh, it plays out pretty much like a fair play mystery. Uh, it doesn't give you any weird information at the last second that you should have known to solve the mystery, so that's fine, uh, but it is problematic that uh, one of the only black people in this has some kind of unexplained magical ability to curse people, uh, and then uh, as the movie goes on, once you find that out, it almost plays her like a bad guy. Uh, Max uh, is a bad guy for sure, uh, and then he ends up committing suicide so that the curse will rest solely on uh, Pierce Brosnan's character, and then he is actually trying to save this little girl who's innocent, and uh, uh, it kind of makes this woman who was a victim out to be a bad guy who's trying to get this little girl who didn't do anything wrong trying to get her killed and trying to put the blood on Pierce Brosnan's hands who also didn't do anything wrong. And, uh, it's definitely problematic. Uh, also because, uh, again, if this had been like the X-Men where other people had uh, weird supernatural abilities, then it wouldn't feel as racial. But there's one black woman who has the ability to curse all these white guys, and it just feels really odd. It feels like someone is saying, well, uh, I'm a white guy, and I don't know anything about black people, so uh, they are mysterious, and uh, they must have all of this mystical uh, connection that I'm unaware of. Uh, and it reminds me of uh, a long 
time ago, I used to watch uh, Movie Bob on uh, the Escapist uh, website, and he did a video. Uh, I don't know if you could still find this video or not. It was called uh, Something About Lost Cities and how uh, back in the 30s you would have a story where some explorers are somewhere in South America and they find some ancient lost city and they're surprised because they didn't think that this civilization from 2,000 years ago was advanced enough to build something like this. They're surprised that these people of color are able to do something that they didn't think they were capable of. And it's inherently racist. And that's what this sounds like to me. It, that's what this feels like. Uh, now, I'm not saying that Stephen King is deliberately racist. I don't think that he is. I think that he thinks that there's nothing wrong with what's going on here. But this definitely felt very uncomfortable to me. Uh, I did not care for uh, this development that inexplicably this woman has a magical ability to curse people. Uh, and maybe in the book, I think the book is probably like 500 something pages long. Maybe in the book it's explained a little bit more and fleshed out a little bit where this ability comes from. Uh, but you have other black characters who also have some kind of mystical uh, importance in the stories that they appear in. And it kind of uh, becomes a little bit problematic. Now, like I said, uh, I don't feel like any of the others are quite as problematic as this. Because in The Stand, you have other characters who have mystical abilities. Like, uh, spoilers for that. Uh, but at one point, Harold ends up committing suicide. And Stu is able to psychically feel that happen. And these are two white guys. Uh, and so uh, it feels a little bit more evenly dispersed there. Uh, in It, uh, you have, uh, I've read the book It, and I've seen uh, the miniseries from the 90s, but in It, uh, you've got the kids, uh, at one point, uh, several of them will have different uh, psychic uh, kind of vision, sort of. Uh, at one point, uh, Beverly is able to use a slingshot, and uh, someone else who's narrating that chapter notices that the stone, uh, the silver piece that she uses, it kind of changes course. And so, uh, it's not like uh, there's one black person there who is telekinetically doing stuff like that. Uh, it's something larger than all of them. Uh, this was really, I feel like, the straw that broke the camel's back. And again, I don't think that Stephen King is actually racist. I don't think that he realizes how awkward this feels uh, when you have one black character in a story and they have some unexplained magical ability. Uh, I don't really have anything profound to say here. I think other people have uh, more succinctly talked about this issue in some of Stephen King's work, uh, how he has a black character who is uh, somehow uh, mystical and uh, a wise uh, black person. Uh, that's a trope that uh, exists outside of Stephen King's work. Uh, it's not great. Uh, but uh, it kind of feels like whenever someone has uh, the wise black figure uh, that they're looking at this black person not as a person but as a source of magic and that they are somehow inhuman. Even if uh, it's not uh, racist in a mean way, like, oh, you're a monster, it's not like they're saying that, but they're kind of going in the other direction, saying like, well, you're not white and we don't understand you, and so uh, you are uh, magical and you're strange and uh, you uh, represent some kind of force that uh, is foreign to me, a white person. That's kind of what it feels like here, and I know I'm spinning my wheels here. I really don't have anything else to say. Uh, if you can watch this and if you can get past that, uh, if you can say, I don't think that Stephen King is is deliberately being problematic like this, then you might really enjoy Bag of Bones. I enjoyed it more than Rose Red. Uh, I enjoyed it more than uh, some of the other Stephen King stuff that I've watched. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, this did kind of uh, pose some questions for me that I was kind of wanting to ruminate on, and I don't even know. Uh, maybe I didn't articulate any of this well enough. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this is a little heavier than normal, but uh, anyway, that's about all that I have to say about Bag of Bones and this topic. Uh, so anyway, I'll see you guys in the future, hopefully with a more lighthearted video. Uh, in the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.